Hi, my name is Mohamed Kajavi. I'm the project director for the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, overseeing engineering and construction of the Silmar ground return system. The following presentation highlights the construction activities of this project. The Silmar Ground Return System, or SGRS, is a vital part of the Pacific Direct Current Intertie System, referred to as PDCI. The PDCI is a bi-directional direct current transmission system that connects the Pacific Northwest to Southern California region. The capacity of PDCI is 3,200 megawatts, which is enough electrical energy to supply about 2 million homes in our area. The power is produced by hydro, wind, and solar generation, all from renewable energy sources. This DC transmission has two poles and operates at a million volts or a thousand kV. At times, the Pacific Ocean acts as one of the poles for the PDCI circuit, and during these times, the entire energy has to be discharged through the SGRS, which is located offshore in Santa Monica Bay. The SGRS also acts as a safety device protecting the PDCI from energy surges that can be caused from lightning strikes or electrical equipment failures. The SGRS is comprised of two primary cables that are tied into the PDCI at our Silmar Converting Station facility. These cables run from Silmar about 28 miles on overhead lines and 9 miles underground to Pacific Palisades. The system then extends two miles offshore out into Santa Monica Bay. At that point, the primary power cables tie into a large area electrode array that consists of 144 electrodes distributed throughout 36 large concrete vaults. The design of the array is such that it distributes the electrical discharge over a large area which renders the discharging electrical current totally benign and safe for marine life, divers, and nearby infrastructures. This documentary presents the process of installing the submarine portion of the Silmar ground return system. Assembly of the electrode vaults commenced in June of 2018 with the arrival of 36 vaults to the port of Long Beach. Each of the 36 25-ton vault structures were loaded onto the barge Eel Point, a 260-foot-long deck barge where the final assembly process of the vaults took place. Four electrodes weighing 315 pounds each were fastened inside each of the structures. A total of 144 electrodes were utilized. Cables from the electrodes were spliced together, forming a junction point that would allow each vault to be joined to cables from the shore later. Construction commenced in August of 2018 with the offshore installation of the electrode vault array. 36 volts were deployed forming two rows in an area roughly the size of two football fields. Temporary cable management frames were used to ensure the cables linking the vault structures were not overstressed or damaged during deployment. These structures were removed from the vaults and recovered after each vault was positioned on the bottom. Check number one. How do you read? Very good, Divers utilizing surface supply diving equipment and decompression chambers and a remotely operated vehicle assisted with the underwater placement and de-rigging of each vault. The vaults were deployed in groups of six. After each group was deployed, the construction barge would return to port to load the next set. Sophisticated underwater positioning survey equipment was utilized for the accurate placement of each vault structure. Elaborate automatic release mechanisms controlled from the surface operations minimized the amount of underwater diver rigging tasks and helped reduce the time required for each vault deployment. Preparations began for the installation of the system primary power cables in early October. This started by converting the Derrick Barge Salta Verde into a cable deployment barge. After performing all the supporting engineering tasks and detailed deck plans, 
modular cable deployment equipment was mobilized onto the barge. This equipment included a 400-ton cable turntable, cable gantry, linear cable engine, and a large diameter overboarding sheave. Following loading and sea fastening, the cable deployment system was fully tested to ensure a safe cable deployment. Then came the task of transferring the first of two primary power cables. Each 13,000 foot long cable weighed 187,000 pounds. They were moved one at a time from their shipping container into the cable turntable. The primary cable deployments both commenced on the offshore end of the cable route, directly adjacent to the electrode vault array. The first step in the process was to form the connecting joints between the primary power cable and the electrode vault array cables. To minimize stress on the completed cable joints during deployment, a temporary deployment frame was used. Once the joints were removed from the frame on the ocean floor, the frame was recovered. Both cable deployments started from the offshore end and laid cable toward the beach. The cable was continuously inspected as it was deployed. Once the two mile long cable deployment was complete, the cable was cut and tested to ensure no damage was sustained during the installation. The first primary cable was then capped and deployed to be recovered later. The installation barge then returned to Long Beach to load the second primary cable and the deployment process was repeated. In order to avoid disrupting the power transmission from the PDCI to Los Angeles consumers, the balance of the work was conducted during a planned two-week system maintenance outage. During the outage, the old system cables were removed from the existing shore crossing conduits and new cables installed in their place. The new cables were then connected to the two primary trunk cables to complete the system. Fiber optic cable was also used inside of the main cable bundles, allowing long-term monitoring of the cable system condition. The cable deployment equipment was removed from the barge and preparations began for the final project requirement, cable burial. A specially designed water jet burial plow was utilized to bury the primary power cables five feet into the ocean floor to protect them from damage. With system testing and commissioning completed, the new SGRS system went into service on November 16, 2018.